the engine of life is linkage. Everything is linked. Nothing is self-sufficient. Water and air are inseparable, united in life and for our life on Earth. Sharing is everything. The Earth is a miracle. Life remains a mystery. Families of animals form, united by customs and rituals that are handed down through the generations. adventure of life on Earth. Every species has a role to play. Every species has its place. None is futile or harmful. They all balance out. And that's where you Homo sapiens, wise human, enter the story. You benefit from a fabulous four billion year old legacy bequeathed by the Earth. You're only 200,000 years old, but you have changed the face of the world. Despite your vulnerability, you have taken possession of every habitat and conquered swaths of territory like no other species before you. In the United States, only three million farmers are left. They produce enough grain to feed two billion people. But most of that grain is not used to feed people. Here, and in all other industrialized nations, it's transformed into livestock feed, or biofuels. The pocket of sunshine's energy chased away the specter of drought that stalked farmland. No spring escapes the demands of agriculture, which accounts for 70% of humanity's water consumption. The more a country develops, the more meat its inhabitants consume. How can growing worldwide demand be satisfied without recourse to concentration camp-style cattle farms? Faster and faster, like the life cycle of livestock which may never see a meadow, manufacturing meat faster than the animal has become a daily routine. In these vast food lots trampled by millions of cattle, not a blade of grass grows. A fleet of trucks from every corner of the country brings in tons of grain, soy meal, and protein-rich granules that will become tons of meat. The result is that it takes 100 liters of water to produce one kilogram of potatoes, 4,000 liters for one kilo of rice, and 13,000 liters for one kilo of beef, not to mention the oil guzzled in the production process and transport. Since 1950, fishing catches have increased five-fold from 18 to 100 million metric tons a year. Thousands of factory ships are emptying the oceans. Three quarters of fishing grounds are exhausted, depleted, or in danger of being so. Most large fish have been fished out of existence since they have no time to reproduce.
We are destroying the cycle of a life that was given to us. Water shortages could affect nearly 2 billion people before 2025. The trees of the primary forests provide a habitat for three quarters of the planet's biodiversity. That's to say, of all life on Earth. But in barely 40 years, the world's largest rainforest, the Amazon, has been reduced by 20%. The forest gives way to cattle ranches or soybean farms. 95% of these soybeans are used to feed livestock and poultry in Europe and Asia. And so, a forest is turned into meat. Barely 20 years ago, Borneo, the fourth largest island in the world, was covered by a vast primary forest. At the current rate of deforestation, it will have totally disappeared within 10 years. All over the planet, the poorest scrabble to survive on scraps, while we continue to dig for resources that we can no longer live without. We look farther and farther afield, in previously unspoilt territory, and in regions that are increasingly difficult to exploit. It's all about carbon. In a few decades, the carbon that made our atmosphere a furnace and that nature captured over millions of years, allowing life to develop, will have largely been pumped back out. The atmosphere is heating up. It would have been inconceivable for a boat to be here just a few years ago. Transport, industry, deforestation, agriculture. Our activities release gigantic quantities of carbon dioxide. Without realizing it, molecule by molecule, we have upset the Earth's climatic balance. All eyes are on the poles, where the effects of global warming are most visible. It's happening fast, very fast. The Northwest Passage that connects America, Europe, and Asia via the pole is opening up. The Arctic ice cap is melting. Under the effect of global warming, the ice cap has lost 40% of its thickness in 40 years. Its surface area in the summer shrinks year by year. It could disappear in the summer months by 2030. The sunbeams that the ice sheet previously reflected back now penetrate the dark water, heating it up. The warming process gathers pace. This ice contains the records of our planet. The concentration of carbon dioxide hasn't been so high for several hundred thousand years. Is excessive exploitation of our resources threatening the lives of every species? Climate change accentuates the threat. By 2050, a quarter of the Earth's species could be threatened with extinction. In these polar regions, the balance of nature has already been disrupted. Around the North Pole, the ice cap has lost 30% of its surface area in 30 years. But as Greenland rapidly becomes warmer, the fresh water of a whole continent 
flows into the salt water of the oceans. Greenland's ice contains 20% of the fresh water of the whole planet. If it melts, sea levels will rise by nearly seven meters. But there is no industry here. Greenland's ice sheet suffers from greenhouse gases emitted elsewhere on Earth. Our ecosystem doesn't have borders. Wherever we are, our actions have repercussions on the whole Earth. The atmosphere of our planet is an indivisible whole. It is an asset we share. On Greenland's surface, lakes are appearing on the landscape. The ice cap has begun to melt at a speed that even the most pessimistic scientists did not envision 10 years ago. As the fresh water of Greenland's ice sheet gradually seeps into the salt water of the oceans, low-lying lands around the globe are threatened. Sea levels are rising, water expanding as it gets warmer, caused in the 20th century alone a rise of 20 centimeters. Everything becomes unstable. Coral reefs, for example, are extremely sensitive to the slightest change in water temperature. 30% have disappeared. They are an essential link in the chain of species. In the atmosphere, the major wind streams are changing direction. Rain cycles are altered. The geography of climates is modified. The inhabitants of low-lying islands here in the Maldives, for example, are on the front line. Every year, scientists' predictions become more and more alarming. 70% of the world's population lives on coastal plains. 11 of the 15 biggest cities stand on a coastline or river estuary. As the seas rise, salt will invade the water table depriving inhabitants of drinking water. Migratory phenomena are inevitable. The only uncertainty concerns their scale. The clock of climate change is ticking in these magnificent landscapes. Here in Siberia and elsewhere across the globe, it is so cold that the ground is constantly frozen it's known as permafrost. Under its surface lies a climactic time bomb, methane, a greenhouse gas 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. If the permafrost melts, the methane released would cause the greenhouse effect to race out of control with consequences no one can predict. we would literally be an unknown territory. Humanity has no more than 10 years to reverse the trend and avoid crossing into this territory. Life on Earth as we have never known it. We have created phenomena we cannot control. Since our origins, water, air, and forms of life are intimately linked. But recently, we have broken those links. Let's face the facts. We must believe what we know. All that we have just seen is a reflection of human behavior. We have shaped the Earth in our image. 
We have very little time to change. How can this century carry the burden of nine billion human beings if we refuse to be called to account for everything we alone have done? The cost of our actions is high. Others pay the price without having been actively involved. I have seen refugee camps as big as cities sprawling in the desert. How many men, women, and children will be left by the wayside tomorrow? Must we always build walls to break the chain of human solidarity, separate peoples, and protect the happiness of some from the misery of others? It's time to come together. What's important is not what's gone, but what remains. We still have half the world's forests, thousands of rivers, lakes, and glaciers, and thousands of thriving species. We know that the solutions are there today. We all have the power to change. So what are we waiting for? 